So uh, I'm Marion Peugeot. I'm going to uh, talk about actual slides and I'm going to show you a biopsy of esophagus. So this esophageal biopsy, as you can see, is lined by squamous epithelium. You have basal cells at the base and it's maturing to the surface. Let's go on higher power. And let me zoom in. So again, you can see on higher power that you have basal cells. Oftentimes it's one to two layer of basal cells. Here it's a little bit very mildly thickened, but still it's in the normal range. You have your lamina propria underneath it. There is some minimal inflammation. Again, not very impressive. So and the surface is, as you can see, the epithelial cells are maturing to the surface. There is no inflammation whatsoever in this epithelium and uh, no perikeratosis, no eosinophils, nothing. So we can consider this as a normal um, esophageal uh, biopsy. Okay, so this is the second case. And as you can see, we have squamous epithelium. There are fragments of squamous epithelium. And if you look around, and as you, sorry that there are lots of folds in this, um, you know, squamous epithelium. This happens whenever you are getting a um, sample. So um, I apologize for that. And then when you go around, you see a lot of inflammation. This is another piece of epithelium. You have squamous mucosa, a lot of sloughed off epithelium, inflammation, and you come here, and you can see a lot of sloughed off epithelium again here. Let me go higher power and show you what these are composed of. So as you can see, there are a lot of um, pseudohyphae and a lot of yeast forms. This is what it's called uh, the spaghetti meatball. And uh, so this is an example of candida. As you can see, there are a lot of yeast forms and a lot of candida organism and causing, uh, you know, inflammation of the mucosa. A lot of the surface mucosa is, uh, you know, squamous epithelium is a sloughed off at mixed with inflammation. So this is an example of candida esophagitis. It often presents as uh, white plaques in uh, uh, mucosa. And as you can see, there are hyphae that are going in the epithelium invading inside. So this is basically a case of candida esophagitis. Third case. Uh, this is a esophageal biopsy of a patient that uh, presented with an ulcer in the mid esophagus. Again, here you can see you have squamous epithelium, basal cells, and you know maturation is there. There's a little bit of inflammation, some lymphocytes here and there. And let's go around, see all the pieces. Here you have a big ulcer, lots of inflammation, and um, eosinophils, neutrophils, lymphocytes. And let's look at these cells here. Um, the pathology is visible here. Let me look, go higher power, and show it to you guys. This is an example of HSV esophagitis. As you can see, you have margination of the chromatin. It's darker around the nuclei, as you can see. There's a ground glass appearance of these nuclei. They are molding they're, and uh, multiplication, so three Ms. You have multiple nuclei, uh, molding of them together margination of chromatin. This is hallmark of HSV esophagitis. And um, so often patients are, could be immunosuppressed, present with um, ulcer, and uh, we see these findings. If there is a question of this is the HSV esophagitis or not, we can always do an um, immunostain. Again, these areas that you can see are just folds in the tissue that always, um, that sometimes happen whenever we get uh, sections of, um, you know, tissue.
uh, on the slide. Case four, uh, this is a esophageal biopsy in a patient uh, that had severe reflux. And as you can see, you have a GE junction, basically a biopsy. This was called distal esophagus. So you have um, stomach or gastric fovular epithelium, and also you have goblet cells around. So if, uh, as uh, you know, uh, you already know if it's more than one centimeter above the G junction, extends more than one centimeter, and you have goblet cells, these um, mucin filled cells here. And if you have goblet cells, we'll call it Barrett esophagus. I will move around in this uh, biopsy and show you other areas. Again, you can see some areas, there are some goblet cells here, and some areas do not have any goblet cells. And if I move around, you can see, so this is Barrett's esophagus. Whenever we get a Barrett's esophagus biopsy, we always need to evaluate presence or absence of dysplasia. This patient has extensive low-grade dysplasia. As you can see, uh, their nuclei are cigar-shaped and they are elongated, they're stratifying, and, and they're no longer, the mucin does not exist in the surface. So this is an example of low-grade dysplasia arising from Barrett's it's esophagus and um, so um, we always report these and these patients can get proper follow-up and uh, treatment. So this is the last case, and in this case, you can see um, this is an actually endoscopic mucosal resection, or EMR, uh, where there was a nodule found in a patient with a history of Barrett's, and they were trying to endoscopically remove the nodule. And as you can see, you have a squamous epithelium, you have muscularis mucosi, and you have very limited submucosa here with these big uh, lymphatics and blood vessels. So uh, when we go around, I'm going to move around and you can see you have various esophagus that already have high-grade dysplasia and invasive cancer here. We can um, move around in this case and you can see that there is high-grade dysplasia and cancer originating from um, basically Barrett's esophagus invading. However, in this case, as you can see, it's already excised. Your, our uh, deep margin, which is here, are um, negative for tumor. So this is an example. This is an example that a Barrett's esophagus can become cancerous.